history is full of fascinating and often bizarre facts. Here are some crazy historical facts from various periods and cultures. The Great Dane is a large and powerful dog breed known for its imposing size and gentle temperament. Great Danes can reach heights of 28 to 34 inches at the shoulder and can weigh between 100 to 200 pounds or more, depending on their gender and genetics. In the first story, Me Julianne, a Great Dane who was awarded the Blue Cross Medal during World War II, the feat that made her win the award is quite unexpected. She took a leak. Yes. She extinguished an incendiary bomb by peeing on it. Or knocker upper was a member of a profession in the Netherlands, Britain, Ireland, and some other countries that started during, and lasted well into, the Industrial Revolution, when alarm clocks were neither cheap nor reliable. A knocker up's job was to rouse sleeping people so they could get to work on time. By the 1940s and 1950s, this profession had more or less entirely died out although it still continued in some pockets of industrial England until the early 1970s. The knocker-up used a batten or short, heavy stick to knock on the client's doors or a long and light stick, often made of bamboo, to reach windows on higher floors. Sometimes a knocker-up used a pea shooter. In return for the task, the knocker-up would be paid a few pence a week. Some knocker-ups would not leave a client's window until they were sure that the client had been awakened, while others simply tapped several times and then moved on. The title, or, Futility, is a novella written by Morgan Robertson and first published in 1898, 14 years before the sinking of the Titanic. The story has often been cited for its eerie similarities to the actual events that occurred during the Titanic disaster in 1912. It's important to note that Robertson's work is a fictional story and not a prediction of the actual event. The novella revolves around a fictional ocean liner called the Titan, which was described as unsinkable and the largest ship of its time. Like the Titanic, the Titan strikes an iceberg on its maiden voyage in April, and due to a lack of lifeboats and inadequate safety measures, many passengers perish in the icy waters. The similarities between the novella and the actual Titanic disaster include the size and speed of the ships, the time of the year of their respective maiden voyages, the collision with an iceberg, and the tragic loss of lives. Wow, quite a coincidence. cap wasn't always a symbol of foolishness. In fact, for centuries it was the mark of a brilliant mind. When philosopher and theologian John Dunn Scotus became famous in the early 14th century for his complex theories on existence and religion, he quickly gained a devoted following of fellow scholars. And even after Scotus' death, these Dunsmen continued to adhere to his teachings, and to wear the pointed hats that Scotus was said to have favored. But as the Renaissance blossomed and humanist theories emerged, academics began to view Dunsmen as people who were behind the times. They weren't smart enough to keep up with changing worldviews, others believed, and those hats were just plain silly. Thus, the dunce cap was born. Henry VIII of England had servants who were called grooms of stool, whose job was to wipe his bottom after he went to the bathroom. The role of the groom of the stool was actually quite significant and involved personal and intimate access to the king. The groom of the stool was responsible for assisting the king with his personal needs, including attending to his chamber pot, managing his private apartments, and overseeing his personal hygiene. They would also serve as confidants and advisors to the king, which could give them considerable power and influence in court affairs. During his reign, he had all of those four such people knighted. Quite a shitty job. Burgess, also known as Caligula, made one of his favorite horses a senator. The emperor loved his horse, named Incitatus, so much that he gave him a marble stall, an ivory manger, a jeweled collar, and even a house. 
Caligula also allegedly planned to make his trusty steed consul before his assassination. However, it is essential to note that these accounts were written after Caligula's death and during periods of political turmoil in Rome, which could have influenced the portrayal of the emperor's character. Many modern historians consider the story of Incitatus's proposed consulship as an exaggerated and sensationalized tale, possibly intended to paint Caligula as a mad and frivolous ruler. In the 1830s, a physician named Dr. John Cook Bennett began promoting tomato-based ketchup as a medicinal remedy. He claimed that tomatoes had various health benefits and could treat digestive issues, among other ailments. Back then, the understanding of the nutritional and medicinal properties of tomatoes was limited, and people believed they had curative powers. Later on, in the mid-19th century, a businessman named Henry J. Heinz began producing and selling tomato-based ketchup. Initially, Heinz marketed his ketchup as both a condiment and a health tonic, emphasizing its purported medicinal qualities. As scientific knowledge advanced, and the understanding of nutrition and medicine improved, the medicinal claims surrounding ketchup faded away. Today, Ketchup is primarily regarded as a popular condiment used to add flavor to various dishes, and it is no longer promoted or sold as a medicine. Thank you for watching.